So our simple interest is basically interest just on the original amount. So we don't reinvest anything. It is just what the original amount can give us. And we're going to explain this by doing an example. So say we have a thousand rand to begin with, and it's a 10%. I don't want to use the minus um, multiplication sign there. It's just 10% per annum, kind of a situation, simple interest. Now, let's start with the first year. At the end of year one, the interest is going to be that thousand rand times by the 10% to get you a hundred rand. So the interest after year one, and I'm just gonna to refer to it as I1, is a hundred rand. The next year's interest doesn't take into account year one's interest, it's only on the original amount. So the next year's interest is a thousand rand times by 10%, which is equal to a hundred rand. So you have I2 is equal to a hundred rand. And once again, the next year's interest doesn't take into account the interest that's been accumulating, it's just on that thousand rand. So you have this happening where it's 100. So I3 is equal to 100. Now you should be seeing that there's a bit of a pattern forming here in that the interest for every year is identical. So if we're working out the total interest for three year period, it would just be that 100 rand times by three. So you can see it's one, two, three. So it's whatever the interest is for, you know, one year period, times by however many year periods there are. And you can double check it by just adding up 100 plus 100 plus 100 to get you that 300 situation. So you can see it ends up being 300 on both sides. And that means we have a formula to work this out. So we, the formula that we use is we had the principal, which is P, times the interest, which is I, and then if we want to work out, you know, the total, we would multiply it by ever many we wanted. So times by N. So the total interest is the principal times the interest times however many periods you want to work out for the, for the total interest to be. And that's where we get the P times by I times by N. Now, just bear in mind here that when I work this out, I just use 10% as is. Most calculators do it nowadays, but just bear in mind that particularly when you use formulas, you would actually convert this 10% to the decimal fraction notation. So instead of having 10%, you would write it as 10 divided by 100, which is 0 0.1. So when you see the formulas, it's the fractional notation like that, not just 10%. Your calculators do allow you to use percentage sign, but just bear in mind with formulas, it is the 0 0.1 representation. Okay, so simple interest, it's only on the original amount. The original amount is called the principal. It's also called the present value. Then you'll be times by i times by n, and that will give you a total interest over whatever time period it is. Now we have to ask, what if we didn't just want the interest? What if we wanted the total amount, you know, given back to us? So we invested a thousand rand. How much are we going to get back in our account after five years? Now, there are a couple of ways we can go about doing this. So our first approach, we would just work out the total interest first. So the total interest is P times by I times by N. So in our case, it would be the thousand times by the 10% times by five, because we wanted to find out what is going to be in our account at the end of five years. So what's going to be transferred back to us. And that's going to give us 500 grand. Before we go further from here, let's just quickly discuss the uh, decimal fraction notation of the interest. So this calculation should actually be a thousand times by 0 
times by five. And that is actually even a little bit easier to do in your head than looking at a thousand times by 10% times by five. Because when you're doing this and you're doing it just in your head, for example, you won't need to do this in your head. You'll have a calculator. But you can already tell from there with the comma that this is pretty much going to go away. And then you'll have your hundred times by your one, and that's going to give you your hundred. And then you have the hundred times by your five, which will give you your 500. Let's just keep that in mind. So again, when you're discussing formulas, invariably the formulas will relate to the decimal fraction notation representation of the interest and not just the interest as I write it over there. Okay, now we have the total interest. So to work out what's going to be transferred back into our account, so in other words, the future value, we would have the principal plus the total interest. And that is the 1,000 Rand plus the 500, and that's going to give us 1,500. But what if we didn't want to break it up into two? So if we didn't want to break it up into two, let's just clear this a bit. So we're going to remove this part here. And we're going to change this to the formula. So the formula is P times by I times by N. So that sits over there. And then we still have the equals to P plus. Now we can see that there is a common factor there of the P. So we're going to take P on the outside and then we're going to say 1 plus I times by N. Where does the 1 come from? Well, to get that original first P back, so this one up here, we would have to multiply it by 1. So P times by 1 is going to give us P and then P times by I times by N. A slightly easier way to see this is to just put in the numbers. So if we had to put in the original numbers, we would have our future value is equal to the thousand plus the thousand times by 0 0.1 times by five. And then you'd be like, oh, sweet, a thousand is a common factor. And that's, you know, easier to see pl one plus 0 0.1 times by five. This is also going to give you 1,500 back. Right, so the formula for simple interest is future value is equal to the present value times by 1 plus i times by n. So let's write that on a clean sheet of paper. So future value is equal to present value 1 plus i times by n. And let's just, again, remind ourselves what everything means. This is the future value. This is the present value or the principal. This is the interest. More specifically, the simple interest. And this is the number of periods the loan is held. Right, so let's do some examples. The two, let's just 